Of all the iPhones that Apple announced at its fall event, the baseline iPhone 12 is probably the most regular of the four. But as you'll see, it still packs quite the punch and makes for a compelling upgrade for older iPhone users. Watch our hands-on video as we review a dozen iPhone 12 top changes and features. But first, a word from our sponsor. With Tenorshare's iCare phone, you can back up, restore, transfer, and export your iPhone 12 data with full control over the process. It's a smart iPhone 12 backup solution that doesn't rely on iTunes or iCloud, and it's free to use. There's also restore functionality, which allows you to restore and copy data from an old phone to the new iPhone 12. iCare phone also lets you intuitively transfer and manage your music, photos, ringtones, books, and contacts. And you'll no doubt enjoy the ability to one-click export photos from your iPhone 12 to your computer. Click the link in the description to download iCare phone and try it for free on Mac and Windows. And for a limited time, you can get 70% off Tenorshare apps. Special thanks to Tenorshare for sponsoring 9to5Mac. With its squared off edges, the iPhone 12 sports a design that harkens back to the days of the iPhone 4. You've got to see this thing in person. It is one of the most beautiful designs you've ever seen. And the iPhone 12 is sort of a remix of this design with the latest tech. From a pure aesthetic perspective, the iPhone 6 era style with the rounded edges never really resonated with me. This style of phone was quite functional, but it lacked an identity, especially when the display was off. With the iPhone 12, a quick glance at the hardware is all you need to do to see that it's an iPhone. It's a modern take on a classic design that's instantly recognizable. Compared to the iPhone 11, you'll also notice smaller bezels and a slightly smaller form factor both in width and height. The iPhone 12 is 15% smaller, 16% lighter, and 11% thinner than the iPhone 11. The only negative thing I can say about the iPhone 12 design is that the flat edges are a little less comfortable to hold in the hand than the rounded edges of its predecessor. The release of the iPhone 12 sees Apple reviving the MagSafe name, which now represents a group of accessories for its flagship device. These specially designed accessories interface with the iPhone 12, with some of them connecting magnetically. The most obvious example of MagSafe and the one most closely related to the legacy MagSafe for MacBooks is Apple's $39 MagSafe charger. Using magnets inside the charger to perfectly align with the rear case of the iPhone 12, the MagSafe charger provides faster wireless charging than a standard Qi charger, up to 15 watts in total. That being said, 15 is the theoretical max and wireless induction charging has inherent inefficiencies that will see users getting less than 15 watts. And you'll also need to pair it with Apple's new 20 watt power adapter to realize full speed charging with MagSafe. When used with the iPhone 12, MagSafe is faster than a typical Qi charger, but it's not what I would call a game changer by any means. It was slightly faster than the Qi charger we tested, but it wasn't a huge difference at all. The biggest improvement that the MagSafe charger offers is its magnetic connection, which auto aligns with the iPhone for a sure charge every time. I can't tell you how many times I've woken up to a dead iPhone using a standard Qi charger because I wasn't careful enough to place the iPhone down just right on the embedded charging coils. Since the MagSafe charger magnetically attaches to your iPhone 12, you can use your iPhone like normal while it's charging. I find that the MagSafe charger provides a better experience when holding your iPhone in landscape mode because you can orient the power cable out of the way unlike a lightning cable connection. And although the MagSafe charger was designed with the iPhone 12 in mind, it also features backward compatibility with Qi charging, which will allow you to charge older iPhones or even a pair of AirPods. Just don't expect the auto aligning magnet functionality to be present on older devices. Another cool thing about MagSafe accessories is that they're able to communicate with the host iPhone 12 in interesting new ways. For instance, when connecting the MagSafe charger to the iPhone 12, you're greeted with a special charging animation and corresponding sound effect. When connecting to a MagSafe enabled iPhone 12 silicone case, you're again presented with this sound effect along with a special animation that represents the color of the case that you're using. That's pretty slick. MagSafe accessories can also be grouped together. For example, you can place a MagSafe wallet on top of a MagSafe silicone case and third parties can also license MagSafe to create their own unique accessories as well. On a high level, 5G offers a much larger range of frequencies, high bandwidth, and lower latency. It thus provides faster speeds along with increased network capacity and availability. 5G is available in what are essentially three different tiers. You have low band 5G, mid band 5G, and high band 5G. The fastest millimeter wave high band 5G is still relatively rare, although Verizon has by far the most widespread implementation of this fastest type of 5G. Now, if you don't live in the US, millimeter 
to waive capability with the iPhone 12 is unavailable because Apple isn't shipping the iPhone 12 outside of the US with the necessary millimeter wave hardware. To be sure, 5G has the potential to yield insanely fast speeds, but millimeter wave will generally be limited to popular outdoor areas in big cities. That's because millimeter wave signals are only capable of traveling very short distances and are easily impeded by obstacles. The most ideal situation is to live in an area with a carrier that has deployed mid-band sub 6 gigahertz 5G, as this has longer range than millimeter wave and can provide significantly faster speeds than low band sub 1 gigahertz connections. In other words, check with your carrier to see what type of 5G is available in your area. Finally, Apple's low-end iPhone moves on from the Liquid Retina HD display to a much more desirable Super Retina XDR display from the Pro lineup. Silly marketing terms aside, that's another way of saying that the regular iPhone now has an OLED display instead of an LCD panel. The biggest and most immediate difference that this makes has to do with contrast ratio, which is now an amazing 2 million to 1 versus 1400 to 1 on the iPhone 11. An OLED display can display true blacks because unlike an LCD, its pixels can turn completely off when displaying black content. As a result, colors are much more vibrant and blacks are truer, resulting in a pleasing image that has the visual pop that the iPhone 11 lacked. The OLED display also contributes to the overall design of the iPhone 12 because the technology allows for a thinner device with thinner bezels. And the thinner bezels, when pushed up against the flat edges of the iPhone 12, not only make it look as if you're holding all screen, but also improves screen durability. Combined with the higher resolution, 2532 by 1170 versus 1792 by 828, a much greater pixel density, 460 versus 326, and 1200 nits max brightness for HDR content, the iPhone 12 Super Retina XDR display is an outstanding upgrade that will make viewing and editing photos and videos much more engaging. In an effort to increase iPhone screen durability, a new composition was developed that introduces super hard nano ceramic crystals into glass. Apple claims that this so-called ceramic shield composition, along with the flush edge to edge design of the glass, yields four times better drop protection. And while I've never been one to drop my iPhone on purpose for the sake of testing glass performance, others have done so already and they seem to vouch for the improvements in durability. Apple also says that it employed the same dual ion exchange that it performs on the rear glass to improve scratch resistance on the front glass. Although from some of the testing we've seen thus far, it'll likely still be susceptible to scratches via normal wear and tear. Like the iPhone 11, the iPhone 12 is IP68 rated, which means that it can stay submerged in water for up to 30 minutes. But this year, Apple has doubled the depth of submersion from an already deep three meters to a six meter depth that's beyond that of a typical Olympic diving pool. Like the A13, the A14 Bionic features two high performance scores and four efficiency cores for a good balance of power and battery conservation. Geekbench 5 results showcase the A14 Bionic's modest improvements over its predecessor in terms of CPU and compute benchmarks. Following the pattern of its forebears, A14 Bionic, which is built on an industry-first 5 nanometer process, is the same chip found in Apple's high-end iPhone 12 Pro. Outside of an additional 2 gigabytes of RAM found on the Pro, performance should yield similar results between both the Pro and the baseline iPhone 12 models. Power-hungry games like Grid, Autosport, and Hot Lava had no problem running at high settings with mostly rock-solid frame rates, and professional video editing apps like LumaFusion were able to handle multiple streams of 4K video without so much as a hiccup. But the biggest standout feature from this year's upgrade is the new 16-core neural engine with 80% faster performance in tow. This makes machine learning operations that are heavily used by the iPhone 12's camera system work faster and more efficiently. It isn't often that Apple is able to improve aperture performance on the iPhone's main wide-angle camera. The last time there was a similar speed improvement, you'd have to go back to 2016's upgrade from the iPhone 6S, which had an f2.2 aperture, to the iPhone 7, which had an f1.8 aperture. The primary camera in Apple's iPhone now goes from f1.8 to f1.6 on the iPhone 12. This larger f1.6 aperture affords 27% better low-light performance and shallower depth of field for improved 
background bokeh, and that's before any effects like portrait mode are used. And the iPhone 12 gains another camera upgrade that hasn't been seen since the iPhone 6S, an increase in the number of lens elements used for the primary wide-angle lens. More lens elements can help control optical defects when comparing the same lens design. And the iPhone 12 camera system also gains a new software-based lens correction feature to help correct lens distortion. But as good as the iPhone 12 camera is, if photography and videography are at the top of your list, then definitely check out the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Apple's high-end iPhone differentiates itself from the baseline model by incorporating a wide-angle 12-megapixel sensor that's an incredibly 47% larger with larger 1.7 micrometer pixels for much better low-light performance. Although the speed of the iPhone 12 front-facing true-depth camera hasn't changed, it's gained a bevy of new features, including lens correction, night mode, night mode time-lapse, deep fusion, smart HDR3, and even Dolby Vision recording. In other words, the front-facing camera, although not near the quality level of the rear-facing unit, receives big machine learning and software upgrades. With last year's release of the iPhone 11, Apple believed that it had improved smart HDR so much that it no longer gave users the option to retain the original copy. Building on the same 10-bit pipeline, smart HDR 3 allows for even more natural-looking skin tones, highlighting shadow roll-off, etc. Smart HDR makes possible higher dynamic range in photos, which lets you shoot a photo containing both bright highlights and dark shadows without areas of the photos being blown out or being underexposed. And a new scene detection component, which can be toggled on and off independently independently will automatically adjust white balance, sharpness, and color of various scenes using machine learning. Night Mode, one of the flagship features of last year's iPhone 11, gained significant enhancements on iPhone 12. For the first time, Night Mode is available on all three cameras, including the front-facing shooter. For the wide-angle camera in particular, which comes with a faster f1.6 aperture, Night Mode is better at capturing extremely low-light shots. And users who enjoy taking time-lapse videos will notice that Night Mode is automatically enabled when shooting in dark areas iPhone 12 is the first camera that's capable of recording in Dolby Vision, and it looks absolutely stunning. To make this possible, the iPhone 12 now shoots 10-bit video, giving it a vastly larger range of colors that it can capture. Apple worked directly with Dolby to implement a real-time, frame-by-frame Dolby Vision workflow, a process that usually needs to be applied in post on high-end video productions. With iPhone 12, you can capture, edit, and share Dolby Vision-enabled video all in one symbiotic, end-to-end -end workflow. Own device editing tools like the Photos app or iMovie can be used to edit these videos, which you can then play back on a Dolby Vision compatible iOS device or simply AirPlay directly to your HDR TV. But talking about 4K HDR with Dolby Vision doesn't really do it justice. You have to see it to really understand why it's such a big deal. Using special metadata, Dolby Vision makes it possible to turn up the brightness level of a particular portion of a video without affecting the rest of the scene's brightness. In other words, it allows for brighter elements to appear like they do in real life. In this hands-on video I recorded the scene of a bright lamp, and you can see how much more vibrant the lamp's bulb is compared to the same video shot without Dolby Vision. Truly, having such a feature in a video camera that's as easy to use as the iPhone is a huge win for on-the-go videography. The iPhone 12 has lots of exciting new features, like its iPhone 4-inspired design, Super Retina XDR display, and MagSafe. But it's the cameras, most notably the wide-angle with its f1.6 aperture meshed with machine learning capabilities that stands out the most for me. That new 16-core neural engine found on the A14 Bionic makes the iPhone 12 a photographer's and videographer's powerhouse. And this isn't even the Pro Max version of the iPhone 12, which is on a whole nother level with its 46% larger sensor. The revamped design and display will get the accolades, and deservedly so, but the metal under the hood, although it won't garner the same year-over-year -year speed headlines of upgrades past, is just as impressive. Remember, this is just our initial look at the iPhone 12 top features. Stay tuned for our full review as I dissect not only the good parts of the iPhone 12, but also the aspects of the phone that I disliked as well. Thumbs up if you want to see that. And thumbs up if you appreciate this video, it helps others find it as well. In the full iPhone 12 review, I'll also discuss whether or not I recommend upgrading if you're coming from last year's iPhone 11. Let me know what your thoughts are on the iPhone 12 down below in the comments section and thank you for watching. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Special thanks to Tenorshare for sponsoring 9to5Mac. Download iCareFone for free today. It lets you back up, restore, transfer, and export your iPhone 12 data with full control. And for a limited time, you can get 70% off Tenorshare apps.